Okay, so I've decided to do a quick video on my progress. Uh, it's very late. It may not make sense, but I have to do it because if I don't, I'm going to forget this time. So I've got a crate, and if I pick it up and drop it, what should happen is it should sink into the ground. moment you should see some walls here in front of us. So the idea is to use this proof of concept to build things like that. Okay, so I've got uh, a script which is triggered from the init and it basically is an event handler on the rope break action. Uh, there are three parameters to that event handler. There's the heli, the rope and the object that you're picking up and at the moment I've got three uh, if statements I could have done a switch but I'm just a bit lazy and uh, basically says if the object that your rope are breaking is either that or that or that then you trigger a script and you send to the script the item that you've dropped so in this case we are uh, dropping this smaller crate and when we do that we trigger this script here Right, so um, there's a couple of things here, so that's just to give me a bit of breathing space. This is a function that manages the uh, blocks and it basically puts them underground and then it pushes them up out of the ground in increments until it gets to zero position. This bit manages the initial dropping of the crate and the sinking of the crate into the ground. So this this function here is, uh, or this little code block is, is just that this, but the opposite. Basically, this takes something from the underneath the ground, and pushes it up. This takes something on the surface and pushes it down. Then you've got some uh, positions of uh, basically local variables, um, all based around an initial point, which is the point at which the crate hit the ground. And these will be applied to different assets, uh, different blocks, if you like. Um, and what we do here is pass the block and also these positions to this function, this rise up function here. So the rise up function takes three parameters. It takes the, the block that you're uh, using. It takes the position of the block and the direction. Uh, there's lots of um, different uh, with the, with, I've realised with the armour blocks, it's not as simple as just changing things in sort of 90, 180, 270 degrees. Sometimes the way the assets have been built, they're not quite exactly on that axis. So you need to do sort of 91.05 degrees or something like that. So I needed to include the direction in that there. So the script sorry the function takes three parameters the block the position and the direction and uh, on on each call of this it disables the simulation it sets the second sorry excuse me the third index of the position array to minus five so it basically sets the position 
that we've passed into this function to um, the same position that we passed, but it adds a minus five to the to the third element, which is the z-axis, which basically puts it underground. Uh, and once it's added, so the set basically adds that value, but it doesn't do anything. So you need to set pos again. So you, you take the asset, you set pos to the new pos, which has minus five. So once you've done that, you've you've turned off the simulation, you've added the minus five to the z-axis, and then you've repositioned the asset to be five meters on the ground. Then you run this little loop, which says you start off with i being minus five, and as long as i is less than 0 0.1, then you increment i by 0 0.1. And as long as that's true, as long as that's true, you do this. So uh, for every cycle, you um, you set the z-axis to the new increment. Sorry, you using set you you allocate this value to the third element of the position array, which is the z-axis. Uh, then you set the direction, which I may not need to do here actually, um, but it seems to work, so I'll look at that another time. Uh, and then you, s once that's been done, you then reset the position of the asset to the new position, and then you sleep, and then you cycle again. Uh, so it's kind of straightforward, but it took me quite a long time to work that out. Um, normally, because I don't use these four loops, I normally use the four, uh, well, the I, I can't remember how exactly how to uh, talk it through, but um, it's the simpler version of the for loop. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so that's the rise up function. So here, uh, obviously this is just a function, it hasn't done anything yet as you're working down the script. So the first thing it does is it takes the, it identifies the object we passed and puts it into that local. Uh, then it turns off the simulation. Then it gets the position of the object and puts it into a local called seed pos. This is relevant a bit further down, so just forget about that for now. So here we've got a single uh, loop code block that manages the position of the object and it sends it five meters underground. It's pleasant. So uh, as before, it kind of does the same thing, but just the other way around. It sets the uh, i increment to zero, and as long as i is greater than zero, uh, sorry, as long as i is greater than minus five it will increment i to uh, by sorry it will decrement i by 0 0.1 so as long as that's true this will cycle and it will as before it will add the i value whatever that is in this particular increment it will add the i value to the third element of the position array which is the z axis and then it will allocate the new position including the new z-axis to the object and then it will sleep so what that basically does is it will kind of slowly pull it into the ground um, and then once it's underground and out of the way I set the position to the corner of the map because if I don't do that and I delete the, the object it kind of glitches out and you see it for a split second which is obviously a weird armor thing, but I've kind of figured out that if you just chuck it away somewhere else and then delete it, uh, you don't see it. So it's a bit smoother. Cool, so that is that. So this bit, so the root position is the position of the object that we dropped. So Genesis position is 30 meters north of the object that we dropped 
and then the first asset that we are placing which is that first bunker is is that um, and then we kind of work through the list of different blocks giving them positional references based on this first initial genesis position so you've got two towers got a left tower which is eight meters west of the bunker but then you adjust that position seven meters south of the bunk of sorry well yeah of, of the bunker but you can you kind of do it in two stages so you take the position of the north central bunker which is the first bunker and you get the position eight meters to the west put it there and then you take that and then you create a new position which is that position but seven meters to the south and you do the same thing for the right hand tower and then the next block is the little wall block and that is based on a position relative to the tower and so on so it kind of piggybacks, piggybacks positional references down through the list but it doesn't do anything with them yet it just allocates them into these uh, local variables cool and then you get to the the build bit so this is where we uh, create the item that we want to place and we create it in the corner of the map for the same reason because if you don't if you create it at these positions here it will glitch even if you create it and then add straight away add the, the Z axis to minus 5 or minus 10 it will still glitch momentarily so again create it out of the way uh, put it in a local uh, and then what you do is you call the rise up script and you give it the thing that you just created the position which is the stuff that we worked out up here and also the direction that it should be in and uh, uh, I think as I said before uh, armor sometimes works nicely on the the pure axis 180 270 and so on and sometimes the assets need a bit of tweaking like that so um, so yeah that's that's basically it so once you've got all this stuff and uh, I basically get these through trial and error because um, there is no real logical kind of snapping as far as I'm aware when you're placing different wall blocks together so you have to sort of play around with it to, to make it look right and that's the result of the trial and error and I, I might show a, that process another time um, but anyway this is the 2D position of where each item needs to be and this stuff is the creation of the item somewhere else and then calling or sorry spawning because we're using sleeps so we have to spawn it spawning this function giving it three things the asset item the position and the direction and once you've got that just go over this again you've got this function here these are the three things that it's given you turn off the simulation you set the position to whatever that position was but minus five underground and then you run a loop that says that for every check that it is less than 0 0.1 then you increment i by 0 0.1 and uh, in that increment you um, basically add add that to the height here <sighs> I hope that makes sense um, so let's just try that one more time
one thing I notice is that there are four ropes. And when you hook it, you get four messages. Because I've got a system chat running on the event handler, so it's obviously run four times. Oh, 